Good afternoon. Good morning, dear colleagues. I would like to welcome all of you here. I uh, would like to express my deepest gratitude from an, for an opportunity to hear all these wonderful presentations and also to add something to them. Each um, CG Where do I need to push in order to flick the slides? Not very clear. So HCG, um, this is uh, one of the perfect, one of the perfect markers of pregnancy, first and foremost, and of course of uh, tumors gestational and non-gestational tumors if this tumor produces uh, uh, chorionic gonadotropin. So by its structure, the human chorionic gonadotropin represents glycoprotein, which comprises two chain alpha, chain, uh, alpha and beta. Alpha is less significant and it's uh, similar to other um, uh, hormones like uh, follicular stimulating and stereotropic hormones and it's specific for the chorionic gonadotropin is beta and uh, more to that another very important integral element in them is the i don't see this red point here but you can see circles which determine all oligosaccharides which are bind to these two subunits, alpha and beta, of chorionic anandotropin, which provide hormone configuration and retain its structure. Also, there may happen changes in the molecule. And then, instead of one oligosaccharide, for instance, in the beta subunit, there will be an additional oligosaccharide, uh, oligosaccharides, and then we shall deal with the hyperglycosylating of the hormone. And this process um, facilitates impairment in the link between two subunits, alpha and beta. Apart from hypoglycosylating, put apart from uh, hypoglycosylation, there also is a uh, splitting. Then it will also be relevant to the beta subunit between 44, 45, 47, and 48 amino acids. Here you can see this, uh, how this molecule is split. And after this splitting and hyperglycosylation, there is a formation of a separate type of subunits of chorionic and adotropin. And the final splitting, when the beta subunits also has a, a C uh, last uh, uh, tail, uh, uh, just when it splits, then there is a final uh, product, beta choreo frag fragment which you can see in the urine. So the splitting of beta uh, subunits and uh, hyperglycosylation uh, re results in the functional change of uh, hormonal activity, as well as its uh, stability in the blood circulation reduces from 1,300 hours to 22 only. And most important, there is an impairment of its uh, binding function to the luteinizing hormone receptors, and it stops impacting the progesterone production. Uh, 
as it has already been said, and uh, I would like just to remind you about the same sort of thing, but uh, now um, in relation to uh, HCG, that in the very beginning, the formation of this hormone happens inside the cytotrophoblast. And only then, in the syntition of the trophoblast, when, when at this uh, uh, cartoon you can see the cells of cytotrophoblast, as a, they are shown here as a disintegrated cells, and inside of them there is a glycosylated chorionic anadotropin, uh, which is formed inside the glycosylated molecules. These molecules and this hormone is different because it has the capability to induce uh, conception of the cell uh, inside the uterine. And also, if we speak about the tumor, then it facilitates deletion, metastasing, and uh, dissemination of tumor. On the right, you can see here syntition cells of the trophoblast. The uh, cytotrophoblast is predominantly glycosylated forms of chorionic gonadotropin. And syntition trophoblast, these are normal, regular chorionic gonadotropin. This is uh, something that is well known to everyone. These are data on the levels of uh, uh, HCG levels in pregnant women, it becomes uh, higher. It is upregulated starting from the very first week of pregnancy and up to uh, the 12th week. It continues growing starting from week 12 in normally developing pregnancy. Level of chorionic gonadotropin goes down. Apart from pregnancy, I should say that uh, HCG in some uh, proportion can be detected in the hypothesis in the in the hypothesis and in uh, um, menopausal women. In women, the function of coronic gonadotropin is, first of all, uh, ripening of the follicles, ovulation, um, uh, progesterone synthesis, and estrogen synthesis. In men, uh, testosterone secretion, the uh, hydrotestosterone, and also the support, uh, it, it supports the spermat spermatogenesis. Thanks to all these um, magic uh, processes, the hyperglycosylation and splitting, at the moment we have 15 forms of chorionic gonadotropin, all in all, which we can detect in blood serum and also in the urine. The basic five out of them the ones that are produced by the placenta and the non-trophoblastic type of tumors, the, uh, these are glycosylated general uh, HCG, glycosylated HCG, hyperglycosylated uh, beta subunit, uh, free subunit, and the core fragment that we can also detect in the urine. These are five main ones, and the 10, Additional are further metabolites of um, HCG. This chart, this chart shows all ten molecules of uh, chorionic gonadotropin. I am showing it here because. Uh, just against each of these molecules, there is a uh, such word as tumor. That actually means that these are hormones which are typical both for pregnancy and also they are uh, they are released when there are malignant tumors in a human system. So 
We have talked uh, a lot about trophoblastic type of tumors. Let's uh, skip this slide and uh, not talk about it long. What is important to diagnose trophoblastic disease? All these are variants of uh, chorionic gonadotropin, which we can detect. This is the ordinary HCG, the uh, free subunits of alpha and beta, hyperglycosylated uh, beta subunits, and also the core fragment degraded uh, of the degraded beta subunit, which is uh, which can be detected both in blood and in um, uh, urine. Now, this is a chart which compares normal pregnancy. Uh, uh, this is chorion epithelioma, a mole, which can uh, transfer to chorion epithelioma. And now it is compared to normal pregnancy in the mole and uh, chorion epithelioma. The uh, split it better uh, HCG, then a free gonadotropin and core fragment is higher than in normal pregnancy. High values of HCG. These are markers of the fact that in this particular case, you uh, deal with chorion uh, epithelioma. First of all, it's very high level of chorion uh, of um, HCG. It can fluctuate in huge amounts. Apart from that, if you consider that it's a uh, normal pregnancy, but it has a, uh, has already been over week 12, but the level of chorionic anadotropin has not gone down. And another thing, when there is a ratio between free beta subunit of the HCG and the general value of HCG, if there is a free beta subunit, if it is over 80% of uh, the general value of HCG, this is a sign of uh, the fact that we are speaking about a mole or a um, uh, chorion epithelioma. I should also say that a tumor cell is capable of producing, if there is a chorionic uh, gonadotropin formed inside of it, that it's capable of producing these uh, cells in a huge amount. There was uh, a calculation made from a cell to the uh, web tumor, and the authors came to the conclusion that even in a very small tumor, if there is a production of HCG inside of it, then this production can be utterly high. That actually means that this hormone, as this is a hormone that can be very useful in diagnostics, If we come back to hyperglycosylated forms of HCG, then, as I've already mentioned, then they form. They are formed in cytotrophoblast on in, during the first weeks of pregnancy, and in that particular moment, they in the serum they account for 98 percent and 96 percent in the urine of uh, chorionic gon uh, gonadotropin they, because they are in charge of the uh, embryo implantation and they must create the trophoblast. But further on, the percentage drops from 90 to 12 and, or 19 at most. But if we speak about chorion epithelioma, if there is a transformation and uh, if it turned into a pathological process, then the percentage of these hypoglycosylated forms will remain um, utterly high, from 60 to 100. And also, there will be very high detection rate of core fragments in the urine. 
now signs of chorion epithelioma, high HCG, high hyperglycosylated HCG, high uh, free beta subunit, and the high hyperglycosylated free beta subunit. In non-trophoblast type of tumors, first and foremost, we have elevated value of free beta subunit. And in relation to aggressive um, and poor prognosis of the tumor, it's a, a hyperglucosylated free beta HCG in the serum and a core fragment of beta HCG that in the, the urine. That means the last split fragment. When it comes to mole, I'm not going to speak long about it because uh, there has been a presentation before me. What What are the periods uh, within which we study and uh, do all the uh, tests for our patients every week? We shall skip the slide because we have already heard about it, how important is the surveillance is. Also, to de detect and diagnose chorion epithelioma, we also uh, need a lot of testing during the first uh, weeks of pregnancy, it's day one, seven, and 14, within the first two weeks. Also, I would like to support Elena Vilimna, who s spoke about the time frames when the tumor can occur. This is the work by um, one of the by Mangla uh, dating back to 2017. There is a follow-up period of 25 years, and in 25 years they diagnosed uh, chorion uh, epithelioma after pregnancy. Apart from trophoblastic tumors, also we know that uh, HCG is formed in the uh, tumors of breast cancer, the uterine, uh, uterine cancer, the bladder, colon, and I'm not speaking about the germ cell tumors. Now, this is another publication which was made um, uh, relatively recently. I would like to show this work because it shows uh, the value of markers. 54-year woman doesn't understand what she suffers from. And out of all the tests, they uh, test for HCG, and it turns out that it was a brain tumor which produced uh, HCG, and uh, it became a marker for that disease. Also, it's very important of uh, detecting HCG, you probably saw how complicated that molecule is. First and foremost, it depends on it depends on what kind of epitopes these are that companies use you know, when they create test uh, systems or test panels to detect this, the levels of this hormone. And uh, depending on the antibody composition, they can uh, detect either only unsplit HCG or unsplit with the free beta subunit, unsplit and split HCG and uh, free subunits or all types of molecules, molecules, including the core fragment. This shows the amount of serum that is required by uh, different tests and test panels. I would like to uh, say that, as a matter of fact, there can be uh, good responses, or sometimes there are false positive and false negative re responses or results. And we should keep this in mind. That is why the test for HCG must be repeated. But the false positive 
they can occur because of the, the link of these antibodies with other molecules. And uh, for instance, there was a study when 200 laboratories tested uh, uh, standard serum. And in 9 to 13% of cases, the tests were in, uh, were in in concordance or defective. When it comes to the false negative uh, results, it's uh, very important to bear in mind that if the test system doesn't uh, rely on the antibody for the split or hypoglycosylated hormone, apart from that, in uh, utterly high levels of HCG, the figures uh, and the values might be lower than they are in real uh, life. And also, there, are, uh, there can be substances like non-specific proteins, which can interfere into the reaction. This is one of the examples of um, how the contents of intact chorionic uh, gonadotropin can get in our way. And uh, they added them the ever-growing amount of up to 1 million units of beta HCG, I mean core fragments. So gradually, as they increased the content of uh, the core fragment, the results of uh, uh, general HCG went down. I would like to say that uh, if we speak about ectopic pregnancy, we talked about it several times today. And uh, actually, taking into account the values of HCG, we uh, should remember that we cannot always diagnose on only um, on the basis of this value. You should take into account the clinical situation as well. The results of chorionic and adotropin, if they are not verified by clinical data, then you, we need to use other antibodies, and uh, we need to uh, also have um, uh, to test the uh, urine. Also, the uh, uh, how you uh, prepare the solution of the serum is very important, but that's uh, mainly for the laboratory work. And in conclusion, I would like to say that however important it seems, I mean, uh, it may be very informative, the value of HCG, but to assess the trophoblastic and non-trophoblastic tumors, today we also have I don't want to say that the uh, pitfalls or, or imperfections, but still we have lots of uh, problems and disadvantages. At the moment, we know 15 molecules, different molecules, and most probably in the future there will be many of them, and the test systems must be um, improved. Thank you.